Welcome to another Tech Help video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I'm your instructor, Richard Ross. This is part three of my Eclipse Timer video series where we're making an Eclipse Timer in Microsoft Access. If you haven't watched parts one and two yet, go do that now. What are you doing here? Go watch those. Come on back. All right, so we got our form set up. We got our little report set up. We got a sun. We got a moon. Now we got to make this thing move. Now, let's figure out where partial begins and partial ends is that would be the partial would begin right when the disk of the moon is touching the disk of the sun right so let's come back over here let's set up two more variables constant partial begins and that's got to be some number i'm going to say let's try 4000 2000 pixels up because the radius right the radius is a thousand so from the center to the edge is a thousand so we want this circle to be right up against this one. So it's probably going to be another 1,000 away from it, right? A total of the di diameter is 2,000. So I'm thinking 4,000 would be good. And then if we've got partial ends on the other side, right, this would be 8,000. So let's draw the moon at where partial begins. Save it. Come back over here. Hit the button. Oh, look at that it's close now it's not exactly perfect because again remember we changed this size here right we made the the sun a little bit smaller because the moon's closer say but there it fits perfectly okay but i'm gonna start, let's let's leave this a thousand for now we'll, we'll tweak it later all right we'll, we'll go with perfect spheres for now we'll, we'll, we'll be the greeks and romans this is the universe the celestial perfect spheres right okay all right now here's where the tricky math comes in Basically, I want to move this moon left or right based on the number of minutes that have elapsed since partial begins, right? So we're going to take this time and then we're going to add to the X value of this circle based on how much time has passed since this spot here. Now, how do we know how much time has passed? Because based on your location, these times can be different. It might not, you might not have the same amount of totality or even partiality as from one location to another. So what we have to do basically is we have to take the partial ends, subtract the partial begins, and that will give us the total duration of the eclipse, right? Then we can divide that up by our scale, however many pixels we're dealing with, and that's how many pixels we can either add to or subtract from this X coordinate based on the current time. I know it sounds crazy, but you'll get it. Watch it. You'll, you'll see what I mean. Basically, we're scaling the, the we're scaling our uh, our drawing in and out based on the time that we need, right? All right, so we're gonna need some more variables in here. So dim minutes difference. That's gonna be how many minutes are there between the ending and the beginning of the eclipse? All right, that'll be a long. We're gonna need our pixel scale. Okay, that's gonna be the pixels of where the circles are going to be drawn divided by the number of minutes. Okay, so if we have to move a thousand pixels in a hundred minutes, that scale will be 10. See what I'm saying? All right, that's also gonna be a long. And then we'll need our minutes elapsed also as a long, so we know how many minutes have elapsed from the current time from the beginning of the partial eclipse. Okay, now, minutes diff is going to be equal to date diff and if you don't know how to use date diff, I got a, uh, a tutorial on that. You'll find a link down below. All right. Number of minutes between the partial and the partial beginning and the partial ending. And those values can be found on the form. All right. So it's forms, main, menu, F. And I'm just going to copy this so I don't have to keep retyping it. All right. Partial begins, comma, partial ends. Let me slide this over so you can see the whole thing. Okay, so that's the total minutes difference between the beginning and the ending of the eclipse. That's the basis for our scale. Now, the pixel scale is going to be the total size of the eclipse in pixels across my report. Okay, so it's going to be partial ends minus partial begins and divide that whole thing by minutes diff. So now I know based on the size of my report, based on the size of the field where the circles are being drawn, right? Take the total size of that, right? One minus two, right? 
and then divide that by the minutes difference. So I know how, how many pixels you have to go across each minute. And again, it's not exact. We're not going into, you know, fractions here. It's close. It's close enough. Now, we also need to know the minutes elapsed, which is going to be, I'm going to copy this guy because it's very similar to this. So we're going to copy this. It's going to be the minutes elapsed from partial begins to the current time. So I know how many minutes have elapsed. Okay, you with me so far? This will make a lot more sense when it's done. You'll be able to go through, watch it again, and you'll see what I'm talking about each step of the way. Now, essentially what I have to do is come down here for my moon circle, okay? And I'm going to say move it to partial begins plus some value here, which represents the minutes that are elapsed times my pixel scale. So if one minute is elapsed, move it one unit over, which is my pixel scale. So it could be 24 pixels per minute or 30 pixels per minute, depending on how quick the eclipse is, right? So it's basically going to be minutes elapsed times the pixel scale. And that could be a negative value too. You can, you're going to watch the moon move left and right. Okay. And fortunately for this, we don't have to worry about out of bounds errors. It's not going to, we don't have to worry about it going too far to the left or to the right. At least what I tested didn't. <laughs> okay. You ready? So we know the minutes and difference between the partial and the end, the partial beginning and the partial ending. We know the size of the report. And then we can now figure out how many minutes are elapsed and how far across we have to go for each minute of the eclipse. Save it. Always good to throw in a debug compile. Are you ready? Now we're going to start this at 1223. Okay. I'm going to add a minute. Now you should watch the moon move to the right just a little bit. Okay. Look at that. Let's do it again. A little bit more. Look at that. See? Eh? Eh? Isn't that cute? All right. Let's put show eclipse in our buttons here. All right. I'm going to go back to my code here. Go to the main menu. That's why I want to put show eclipse in here. So each time we hit these buttons, all right, the add a minute, then do show eclipse, and then we'll subtract a minute right down here, show eclipse. So we don't have to keep hitting two buttons. Ready? Click, click. See, look at that. Eh? That's pretty cool, huh? There you go. Let's bring it closer to totality. So at 1340, let's bring this up to 1338, and then show eclipse. Almost covering it. See, there. And there, now it should be totally covered. And again, this is why I, before I said, let's cheat and change the size of the sun just a hair. I, want, I think I put this at 940 in my calculations. That, that came up pretty good toward the totality point there. There we go, All right? So you back it up and you can still see the little bit of it. Okay, and it should come out the other side. Totality ends at 1344. So 42, 43, 44. And 45, you're going to start to see it back on the other side. There you go. See? That's pretty cool, huh? And 1223, let's show that again. It's a, it's a slight tiny bit off there on this end. But, yeah, you got to, I mean, it's, it's, it's this isn't perfect. You're not going to be using this, you know, in your astronomy lab. <laughs> this is just for, for entertainment purposes only, kids. Actually, I haven't tried. You might get better results keeping the sun at a thousand, making the moon a little bit bigger. But uh, again, this is close enough for, for government work. Um, another thing that I like to do is during totality, let's flip the colors, right? When this guy actually crosses the sun, if we're at 1339. Oh, and you could put the, you could put the show eclipse in the after update event for this too, if you want to. All right. When this guy actually goes over the sun, let's flip the colors a little bit. So right after we draw the sun... We'll say totality is here, okay? So we're going to say if, nope, I want my forms. I want this thing. I thought that was still on my clipboard. Let's copy that back again. If, if the current time is greater than or equal to totality begins and the current time is less than or equal to totality ends, then we're going to do some stuff else, do some other stuff. What are we going to do? Well, we're going to flip the color of the moon. Let's make it like a light gray. All right, let's say um, me.fill color. 
that's the color of the moon because we haven't drawn the moon yet at this point, equals, I'm going to go RGB uh, 230, 230, 230. That's a really light gray, almost white. Remember, 255 is white for all three of those RGB. 230 is just a little bit less than that. And while we're at it, let's also make the background color of the detail section black on the report. So me dot section zero, that's the detail section, dot back color equals VB black. Right? Otherwise, it's normal. So me dot fill color equals VB black. And then me, I'm just going to copy this instead of retyping it. Me dot section zero back color is going to be VB white. Okay. Save it. Let's come back out here. All right. We're not quite to totality yet. Ready? Click. One more. Click. And oh, oh, oh what happened? Uh, we're not getting our moon. Where's our moon? Let's see here. Hold on. Let's go back. Let's check it out. Ah, look at it. I, I found the problem. Anybody see it? I still got this guy down here. So no matter what happens, that's overriding it. All right. So get rid of you. All right. Save it. Come back over here. And boom. There's my totality. Yay. And if you want, you could maybe make this dark and, you know, Make a smaller circle inside of it that it represents the aurora. Whatever you want to do. The, not the aurora, the, uh, the corona. Right? And then as you're moving across, you're moving across, you're moving across, you're moving across. And time to put those goggles back on, kids. Don't look at the sun. Unless you're in totality. And I plan on having a little stopwatch on my phone for the, whatever the three minutes and whatever. So it beep, beep, beeps like five seconds before you got to put your glasses on. All right? And like I said before, you can do something like this if you want to. If you want to come in here and say it's 11 o'clock and then show Eclipse, you'll see the sun. It's way over here. See, it'll, it'll go pretty far. I haven't tried. Let's see how far. Let's try 8 a.m. I think it won't even show up on the page. Yeah, it doesn't give you an error, but it's way over to the left, so you're not going to see it. <laughs> All right, if we go to 11 o'clock. And there it is. It's pretty good about that. All right, one more thing and then we're done. What if you want to follow this thing in real time? You want this to actually move across the screen in real time? Well, we can use a timer, a form timer event for that. Okay, I'm going to put a checkbox on my form and let's make this white and we'll call this real time. This guy here. And of course, I'll be disappointed in you if you're in the eclipse totality path and you're watching this database during the actual <laughs> eclipse i won't be <laughs> all right default value let's say no you got to turn it on manually all right now when the user checks this box we're going to activate real-time mode so go to events go to after update dot 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 okay what are we going to put in here well if real time, in other words, they just check the box on, then me dot timer interval equals, let's do 60 seconds. You could do 10 seconds. You can do whatever interval you want. I'll do, you know, for the purposes of class, I'll do 10, I'll do five seconds, 5,000, just so you can see it running. Normally, I would set this to like 60 seconds. Okay, so this will be five seconds. Remember, these are milliseconds. And if you don't know how to use the timer interval, I got lessons on that too. I'll put a link down below here. Let's see. Timer. I'll put that in the link section. Okay. Um, and then we want to um, say otherwise me dot timer interval interval equals zero. Turn the timer off, which is the default setting. Now, the timer interval will fire the timer event from the form. So come to the forms properties. Scroll down till you see the timer interval. Leave that zero. Because we want it to start, we want it to start off, right? And now the on timer in here, we're gonna say the current time equals. I'll put the current time in there. There's a lot of different ways you can do it. Here's the easiest way: now minus date, right? Because now gives you the current date and time, and then we're just gonna subtract the date from it, which is the current date at midnight. So what you're left with is the time. You can use time serial. You can use all kinds of other tricks. That's my way of doing it. Okay. And then when this kicks off, we're going to show Eclipse. So it updates. 
Okay, and in this case, it's every five seconds. I suggest setting yours to every 60 seconds because it's not going to matter, right? 60 seconds is the interval you're going to get anyways. Save it. Debug compile, which we haven't done in a while. Come back out here. Close it. Close it. Close it. Open it. And let's go to real time. Now it's currently 5.56 p.m., so that's going to change it in five seconds to that. <laughs> it's nowhere near the sun. <laughs> Let me turn that off. But you can see it's working every five seconds. Let's cheat, though. Let's make another location. Let's just call this uh, Rick World. And let's say that um, partial begins at 1700. Totality begins at 1758. Maximums at 17. And let's go 1800. Totality ends at 18.02, and the partial ends at uh, 1,900. All right, and then we'll go show the eclipse. We're near it, hit real time, and every five seconds, that should update. And you should see it should update to 57. There we go, it's getting even closer. Obviously, the time's not going to change, but yeah, it's working. Yeah, well, there it goes. Okay. We gotta wait. We gotta wait a minute for totality to kick in. Do 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 do. <laughs> and there it goes. Good enough. You can see it's a little teeny tiny bit of it over there. But we can make adjustments. But that's it. That's that's how you build an eclipse timer. I think it's it's pretty cool. And yeah, there's a lot you could do with this. I just threw this together in an afternoon, but there's all kinds of enhancements and updates and changes and stuff you can make to it. I encourage you to play with the Legos and have fun and do something on your own that you'd think I'd be impressed with. And then you're going to post it in my forum so I can see it. Show me some screenshots. <laughs> but there you go. I hope you enjoyed my little Eclipse Timer series. Hope you learned something. That's your tech help video for today. Live long and prosper, my friends. Go watch the eclipse safely and enjoy it if you're in the path. And if you're not, watch it on TV. But that's your tech help video for today. I'll see you next time. Live long and prosper. Bye-bye. If you enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up and post any comments you may have below. I do try to read and answer all of them as soon as I can. Make sure you subscribe to my channel, which is completely free. Click the bell icon and select all to receive notifications when new videos are posted. Want to learn more? Click the show more link below the video to find additional resources and links. YouTube does a pretty good job of hiding it. It's right down there. See this part of the description here, right? The name, the videos up here. There's a little show more down there right down the bottom. It's kind of hard to find. But once you click on that, you'll see a list of other videos, additional information related to the current topic free lessons, and lots more. And YouTube no longer sends out email notifications when new videos are posted like they used to do. But if you'd like to get an email every time I post a new video, click on the link to join my mailing list. And you can pick how frequently to get emails from me, either as they happen daily, weekly, or monthly. Now, if you'd like to become a paid member of my channel and receive all kinds of awesome perks, click on the join button. You'll see a list of all the different membership levels that are available, each with its own special perks, including my extended cut videos, access to my code vault, lots of VBA source code in there, template downloads, and lots more. I'll talk more about these perks at the end of the video. Even if you don't want to commit to becoming a paid member and you'd like to help support my work, please feel free to click on the tip jar link. Your patronage is greatly appreciated and will help keep these free videos coming. I got some puppies to feed. But don't worry, no matter what, these free tech help videos are going to keep coming. As long as you keep watching them, I'll keep making more and they'll always be free. Now, if you really want to learn access and you haven't tried my free Access Level 1 course, check it out now. It covers all the basics of Microsoft Access, including building forms, queries, reports, and more. It's over four hours long. You could find it on my website or on my YouTube channel. I'll put a link down below you can click on. And did I mention it's completely free? The whole thing, free, four hours. Go watch it.
And okay, okay, a lot of you have told me that you don't have time to sit through a four hour course. So I do now have a quicker Microsoft Access for Beginners video that covers all the basics faster in about 30 minutes. And no, I didn't just put the video on fast forward. <laughs> but I'll put a link to this down below as well. Now, if you like level one, level two is just a dollar. That's it, one dollar. And that's another whole like 90 minute course. Level two is also free for paid members of any level, including supporters. So if you're a member, go watch level two. It's free. Okay, want to get your question answered in a video just like this one? Visit my tech help page and send me your question there. Members get priority, of course. While I do try to read and respond to all of the comments posted below in the comments section, I only have time to go through them briefly a couple of times a month, and sometimes I get thousands of them. So send me your question here on the tech help page, and you'll have a better chance of getting it answered. And while you're on my website, be sure to stop by my Access Forum. We've got lots of lively conversations about Microsoft Access and other topics. I have a fantastic group of moderators who help me answer questions. Shout out to Alex, Kevin, Scott, Adam, John, Dan, Juan, and everybody else who helps out on the site. I appreciate everything you do. I couldn't do it without you. Be sure to follow my blog, find me on Twitter, and of course on YouTube. Yeah, I'm on Facebook too, but I don't like Facebook. Don't get me started. Now, let's talk more about those member perks if you do decide to join as a paid member. There are different levels, silver, gold, platinum, and diamond. Silver members and up get access to all of my extended cut tech help videos, one free beginner class every month, and some other perks. Gold members get all the previous perks, plus access to download the sample databases that I build in my tech help videos, plus access to my code vault where I keep tons of different functions that I use, the code that I build in most of the videos. You'll also get higher priority if you do submit any tech help questions. Now answers are never guaranteed, but you do go higher in the list for me to read them. And if I like your question, you got a good chance of it being answered. You'll also get one free expert level class each month after you've finished the beginner series. Platinum members get all the previous perks plus even higher priority for tech help questions. You get access to all of my full beginner level courses for every subject. And I cover lots of different subjects like Word, Excel, VBA, ASP, lots of different stuff, not just access. These are the full length courses found on my website. You get all the beginner ones. In addition, once you finish the expert classes, you get one free developer class per month. So lots of training. And finally, you can also become a diamond sponsor. You'll have your name or your company name listed on a sponsors page that will be shown on each video as long as you're a sponsor. You'll get a shout out in the video and a link to your website or product in the text below the video and on my website. So that's it. Once again, my name is Richard Rost. Thank you for watching this video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I hope you enjoyed. I hope you learned something today. Live long and prosper, my friends. I'll see you again soon.